So now we are moving on to Lauren Hage from Weaving Earth. Lauren is uh, the executive director, co-founder, and facilitator for the Weaving Earth Center for Relational Education. She comes from Ashkenazi, Jewish, uh, Odessa, Sicilian, and Scottish ancestry. Lauren has been working outdoors with youth, teens, and adults for 20 years. She's a certified facilitator of the somatics-based body of work called the Resilience Toolkit. She holds a degree in earth sciences and geography with a focus on the human earth relationship and holds certifications in ecological agriculture, regenerative, regenerative design and nature awareness, permaculture, embodied social justice and integrated trauma therapy. She is also a part of Beyond Boundaries and the Fierce Allies Practice community. I'll pass it to you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for all the folks who have gone before. It's nice to hear you um, and be together in this space. Thank you, Ecoversities. Um, thanks for the intro. My name's Lauren Haig. It's Haig, um, but no worries. People always do that. And um, I use she, her pronouns. And my Hebrew name is Liba, the root of which um, means heart. So I feel really um, centered by and, and dedicated to all matters of the heart. Um, I feel like that's really part of what I, why I'm here. Um, my ancestry is Ashkenazi Jewish coming from um, mostly the Odessa area and then also Sicilian and Scottish. And I also come from a lineage of earth-based peoples and witches in the best sense of the word. And I'm calling in today from Southern Pomo territory, um, which is uh, also currently um, called Sonoma County in Northern California. So thank you to this place. Thank you to all the places that you are calling in. Maybe you could just take, uh, I don't know, 15 seconds to just um, put in the chat an image of the place that you're in so we can conjure the magic and the imagery of where, where we are each calling from. Do people have chat access? They do, right? Thankful to the waters from where you are, to the plants of where you are. I'm imagining it's different times of day, to the stars, to the moon. Yes, snowy peaks. Horse and buggies, hummingbirds. Thank you, thank you. So gratitude to all those places that um, connect us and bring us together. Um, as was said, I'm executive director and one of the co-founders of Weaving Earth. Um, what Weaving Earth is, we're a multicultural collective of people dedicated to the practice of what we call relational education. And we conceived the word relational education about um, over a decade ago in an attempt to find language for pedagogy that centers interrelationships in practice, in learning, in living. So interrelationship is really at the center. And we work with adults, we work with teens, we work with youth, schools, communities, organizations in a variety of ways. We have a whole um, breadth of programs, which you could find out more about on our website, weavingearth.org, which I'm sure will go into the chat. And I'll share more about our curriculum and pedagogy in a little bit, but I also was thinking to start with a story. So um, thank you to the story that just came as well. Um, when I was thinking about what story to share, there were so many that came. And, <clears throat> but this is the one that wanted to come today. So I'm gonna tell it. Um, <clears throat> it happened a few months ago. I was in the field working with a group of kids. It was the beginning of the, their program year. Um, so I was there to help welcome them, support the youth mentor team. And this group in particular were six years old. So. I'm telling this story. We work with people of all ages, but I'm telling this story from the six-year-olds today. Um, and we had walked out to the edge of forest and meadow, and some of the kids were drawn they were to the meadow zone. They were playing in the sun. There was like imaginative play happening amongst the grasses and the flowers. It was sunny. It was warm. Um, and then some were drawn into more of the cooler, dense part of the forest. Um, where there was a bunch of bay trees in particular and also dug fir trees and 
the the soundscape there were birds singing it was um joyful play happening there was imaginative play happening and then all of a sudden i i felt a shift and then i heard um these raised voices and it was coming from the group of kids there were four of them that were hanging out in the trees and so I moved closer to them and I could see that two of them were near tears and looking really upset pointing at the other two. And I asked what had happened. And they said, well, those two won't let us play with them. And I, and then, and then one of the kids from the other group was like, well, this is our house. And I said, pointing at the tree, they're saying, this is our house. And I was like, well, why can't they come into your house? And then they said, because we're playing private property and this is our house. And I've spent a lot of time with little ones. I've been working with people outdoors for 20 years. I'd never heard kids use that phrase before playing private property. And so I said, well, where did you learn to play that game? And the, the kid said, well, there's private property all over my street. And then the other one was like, yeah, and they can't come in. And these are our weapons to keep them out. And then they held up sticks as pretend weapons to protect their home. And immediately those other two that were originally upset that called me over and they were upset about being left out they're like oh yeah well then we're we're also playing private property and this is our house and no one can come in and then they ran off let's go find weapons of our own and they ran off to find weapons of their own and I was like wow okay I felt tears in my eyes digesting what had just happened there's a whole intervention story that I could share. We've been working with these kids now for months and months in a whole bunch of ways to support them to undo some of what, what that story was, but I'm, I'm not gonna go into that right now. I just wanted to leave you with um, that image because um, it was just a really clear reminder that training in the rules of society happens early. And in this case, the rules that were created by systems of dominance those were the rules they were playing. And those rules have brought so much people, planet, ecological, social to the tipping point. Privatization of place, ownership of the earth, consequences for those who cross the line, violence, trauma, and then embedded within that all, who belongs, who doesn't, and therefore who matters and who doesn't. And so at, the, at six years old already, these young kids, they're, they're playing what they're witnessing the adults around them playing. And they're mimicking the stories that the systems are telling them that they're true, that are true. And those, the stories um, only compound and get deeper and more embedded and more embodied with each moment that, um, of life that we're spent swimming in them. And we live in a, in a series of interlocking systems of dominance that are harmful by design. It really is by design. And there's so much that could be said about that. This doesn't fit into 10 minutes, but I tell that story because in essence, that's, that's why Weaving Earth exists. We wondered how do we create containers and experiences for people that resist such stories? How do we create embodied experiences that remind us that we are interconnected beings, that we are part of the earth, we are being impacted by and impacting everything around us and between us all the time. And we feel and felt that education is an essential intervention because education through family, through school, through media, that's how we're learning the stories that shape the way we interpret the world. And so um, if we want to change those stories, and education is one essential intervention. It's not the only one, but it's one, and that's the one we focus on. So our pedagogy at Weaving Earth is um, that we believe education today must critically engage inherited stories of separation and domination, and then simultaneously responsibly recollect a deeper human inheritance stories of interrelationship, stories of belonging, stories of dignity, stories of respect. And that is essentially the goal of our relational education programs. And our hope from this orientation is that education can be accountable to its part in reinforcing colonial and oppressive stories, beliefs and patterns over time. And it has really had a big impact in doing that. Um, and also that it can propel systems change, which we have really seen. Um, we say our work is at the confluence of personal, 
um, ecological and um, social systems change. And we have really seen big impact in the, in the people that we work with. And it's, and it's hopeful, even though that's an intense story. Um, you know, those six-year-olds were enacting. And I know that there are many indigenous communities, organizers, educators, activists, many of you on this call who um, have been and continue to embody that orientation and that way of educating. And we feel grateful to be a part of that web um, and to join so many voices who know that humanity is way more capable um, than things other than um, division and destruction. So our curriculum is at the confluence of four key practice areas and they're all of course interrelated, but it's helpful sometimes to name them. Um, so it's earth intimacy, eco-social collaboration, embodiment or somatic work and prayerful action. Those are our four um, practice areas and we emphasize them as key approaches for addressing the social and ecological crises of our times. And they're at the center and the heartbeat of all the work that we do with the adults and the youth and the teens and, and consulting with organizations and things. Um, let's see, we call, I just to say quickly, we. Um, we call it 30 seconds, sir. 30 seconds. Is that what you said? Yep. Thank you. Um, there's so much that could be said about examples of how all of that shows up, um, but just wanted to say that um, part of why we call it Earth Intimacy is this acknowledgement that um, connection is already there, but we are um, we're in the practice of deepening our, our intimacy with the Earth as a body of the earth. And that part feels so essential. So I just wanted to end there and just say that I came, I just came back from um, a, a trip with some, also a youth story. And um, I feel hopeful post the trip on how quickly um, we can reawaken our attunement to the wild languages, to the wild places, to the wild inside, to this dignity, this belonging, this respect, this interrelationship. And that's um, a little bit about the work we're doing at Weaving Earth and more that could be said, but um, please look us up and I'll pass it to the next person. Thank you for the time.